Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. This is my fifth video in my sub-series of integration on my series of first year calculus. And today I'm going to talk about integrals of elementary functions. And I have 12 of them written down in the middle of this slide. These are actually very easy to get, as we'll see. But anyway, let's begin. So I think the starting point is let's let's look back at the rules we uh, came up with when we were talking about differentiation. This was this was 24 rules we derived for uh, for derivatives of elementary functions and some other basic integration rules. And um, uh, so by by uh, virtue of the fundamental theorem of calculus, since we know that uh, integration is the opposite of differentiation. In each of these cases, we can start with the expression on the right, and we know that the integral of that function is just the thing on the left. So that immediately gives us these 12 um, formulas for integrals of um, some elementary functions. And the only two it doesn't give immediately are actually the last two. It'll give us these formulas if, for a equals 1. It turns out that for general a, here a is supposed to be an arbitrary positive uh, uh, real number. Um, you could just use substitution to get these equations. Uh, pretty simple. But anyway, uh, these are 12 uh, common integrals you'll see a lot. And uh, um, let's just go through some examples. Uh, so uh, uh, for example, one, um, this is, this is, here we're asked to evaluate the de a definite integral. Uh, and we're given uh, polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 5, and we're asked to integrate that from 0 to 1. Well, this is something you'll see a lot. You'll see, you'll see a lot of integrals of polynomials, and they're very easy. I mean, you just apply the power rule to each term. And we know that integration is linear, just like differentiation. As a matter of fact, the linearity of integration follows immediately from the um, you know, linearity of differentiation uh, plus the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, um, so let's just do this. So um, the integral of x squared minus 3x plus 5, you just integrate term by term. The integral of x squared gives you x cubed over 3. Integral of 3x gives you 3x squared over 2. Um, you subtract that. And then finally, the inter integral of 5 gives you 5x. So we're left with this new polynomial, x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 5x. And we're, in, we're evaluating that polynomial uh, between x equals 0 and x equals 1. And uh, I like to write everything over a common denominator. It just makes life a lot easier. In this case, the common denominator is 6. And the numerator, if you do that, becomes 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 30x. And uh, we can simplify this th further. We can factor 1 sixth out of the whole expression. And we can also simplify the numerator. We notice that um, every term in the numerator has a common um, factor of x, so we can factor that out. So now the numerator becomes x times 2x squared minus 9x plus 30. And we're evaluating that between 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. Well, uh, let's first evaluate it at x equals 1. Um, so when you do that, you get 1 times 2 minus 9 plus 30. That's uh, what you get for the upper limit. And plugging in x equals 0 is very easy because x, um, the, you notice that you factor out x and that's 0. So that just gives you 0 for the whole thing. So when you're done simplifying this, you get 23 over 6. Anyway, that's how you do that. Um, let's look at another example. Here's a, here's a, um, um, we're given the definite integral of x minus 1 over x, x going from 1 to 2. Um, this time we can't use, the, we can use the power rule on the first term, x. That just gives us x squared over 2 when we integrate it. But we can't use it on 1 over x because that's the exception. Uh, remember that when n equals minus 1, we can't use the power rule but we know that the derivative or the integral of 1 over x is just ln x. I went over that in the last lesson. So, um, so in the end, you get x squared over 2 minus ln x, x evaluated from uh, between 1 and 2. And so when we uh, 
Um, if we, again, simplifying uh, by writing everything over the common denominator, we get 1 half times x squared minus 2 ln x, um, x going from 1 to 2, that should be 1 to 2. And uh, when we plug in uh, x equals 2, we get 4 for x squared. Um, I like to group the terms uh, this way. So when you plug in uh, the lower limit, 1, you get 1, so you get 4 minus 1. And then uh, uh, for the second term, uh, when you plug in 2, you get um, 2 log 2. Um, we can factor out 2 for the whole thing. So we get 2 times log 2, and we plug in 1, we get log 1, but log 1 is 0. So when you simplify all this, you get 3 minus 2 log 2 over 2. Um, anyway, so that, that's that example. Uh, let's look at a third example. Um, let's evaluate the definite integral of sine x from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 4. Um, well, the integral of sine x, this you can get immediately from the, from the table I showed at the beginning. That's just minus cosine x. And so we're left with uh, minus cosine x, x evaluated between 0 and pi over 4. Um, notice that it, it's usually a good idea when you're working with cosines to have the, uh, the to flip the uh, limits around. It's better to have the lower limit, uh, the smaller, uh, a smaller upper limit than lower limit, <laughs> because uh, cosine uh, uh, decreases at least over the range we're looking at here. It's a decreasing function. So, so this thing is equal to cosine x x evaluated between pi over four and zero. That means that we get cosine of zero minus cosine of pi over four. Well, cosine of zero is one. And cosine of pi over 4 is uh, square root of 2 over 2. And again, we can write everything over a common denominator. We just get 2 minus square root of 2 all over 2. Um, let's look at another example. So uh, how about the uh, definite integral of uh, dx over square root of 1 minus x squared? Um, x going from 0 to 1. Well, again, this is one we can get immediately from the table. This is just, th this integral just happens to be arc sine of x. And we're evaluating arc sine of x from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So this is arc sine of 1 minus arc sine of 0. And arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. And arc sine of 0 is 0. So you get pi minus, pi over 2 minus 0, which is pi over 2. And then for a final example, this is a very similar one. Let's evaluate the definite integral of uh, dx over square root of a squared minus x squared, this time x going from 0 to a. Well, again, this is one you can get from the table, and the result is the arc sine of uh, x over a. Uh, and we're evaluating that from x equals 0 to x equals a. And again, you're going to get the same thing, si arc sine. When you plug in a for x, you get arc sine of a over a, where a over a is just 1. So again, you get arc sine of 1 for the upper limit, and you get arc sine of 0 for the lower limit. So this is the same thing we had last time. The answer is going to be pi over 2 again. Anyway, that's how you do some examples of some definite integrals and uh, using the table I gave you uh, of... Uh, definite integral, integrals of elementary functions. So that concludes my video for today. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.